Hi, my name is Steve Tegler. I'm a director of technical product management here at VMware in our cloud native apps business unit. And uh, this Lightboard session is all about giving Kubernetes to you in five minutes. And uh, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, so I'm going to have to brush over a lot of uh, detailed concepts in Kubernetes, but I want to give you a rough idea of what is it and what does it actually do and what is it responsible for. Uh, for. So there's a few different architectural components, two of which I'm going to talk about. Um, the first of which is the Kubernetes cluster services. And you know the, the, the fundamental uh, 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 premise behind Kubernetes is that um, we can enforce what's called desired state management. And really what that means is that I'm going to feed the cluster services a specific configuration and it will be up to the cluster services to go out and run that configuration in my infrastructure. Okay? One of the main uh, components that I do want to call out is this uh, API that sits in front of all this in the API services. So that is one building block of the system. The second building block of the system is this thing called a worker. And what is a worker? Well, a worker is really just a container host. Um, the one thing unique about a worker or uh, the container host in a Kubernetes environment is that it does have this kubelet process that runs, which is responsible for communicating with, yes, you guessed it, the Kubernetes cluster services. And so this whole thing, the cluster services, the workers themselves, that's what makes up this quote unquote Kubernetes cluster. So let's talk about the use case here. So in this case, um, you know, what we want to do is we want to feed this the configuration. So the desired state, so to speak, exists here in a deployment YAML file. So here I'm just going to call it application1.yaml. And inside this, there can be a whole bunch of configuration information, and I am going to bypass uh, uh, quite a bit of it, but I'm going to talk about two fundamental pieces. The first of which, in this deployment file, is a pod configuration. And a pod is like the smallest unit of deployment in Kubernetes, in terms of uh, the Kubernetes object model. And what it means is that in a pod, I can have uh, running containers. And you can have one or more. So in order to run that pod, I need to specify some sort of container image. Maybe I want to have two container images. And um, further down the line, there's other things like what TCP port and where our service is running or whatnot. But the other additional thing is that I'm going to specify how many of these pods need to be running here. So maybe there's three for pod number one. I can also list additional pods. So here's pod, uh, here, let me use a different color. So pod number two, and I basically have container image uh, number three, and then replicas off my configuration file equal to two. So what happens is I will take this deployment file, I will feed it to the API, and it will be, up, it will be up to the cluster services to figure out how to schedule these pods in the environment and make sure that I have the right number of pods running. So I feed this file over here. Let's work on pod one. So I'm going to have pod one replica one, pod one replica two, pod one replica three. In addition, I've also got my pod two. So here we are, pod two, replica one. And in this case, we only have two replicas here. So let's just do pod one replica two here. And so you can see at any point in time, the cluster services are responsible to make sure that configuration is running across all of my container hosts or, or my workers. So what is, um, what's a unique scenario that happens here? What happens if I lose a worker? Now my running configuration, because that pod is now dead, my running configuration does not match this. And it's up to the Kubernetes cluster services through the kubelet uh, process that's running to notify me of that and to understand what's actually running. So what I've done is I actually drop this pod one replica two. So therefore the scheduler has to make a scheduling decision on where I need to instantiate that. So it will just pick uh, one of the workers, whoops, uh, that will be pod 
uh, one, and in this case, this is replica two. So this is kind of the basics of Kubernetes in five minutes. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more Lightboard sessions on the subject of Kubernetes with Photon Platform. Thanks. Thanks.